Ladies and gentlemen, have any of you gotten into chess? Chess is a fascinating game full of complexity and wonder, but it's not really progressive. And what I mean by that is, we don't allow our kings to touch. The kings are in a class of their own. They're a noble breed. They don't interact with other pieces very well. They can only move one step at a time. And there is a barrier, natural or materialized, created between the white and the black king. They are not allowed to interact. First of all, I think you should be able to capture the king in chess. I think if you miss a check, you should just lose because they take your king. I think that should be added as a rule, but that's, an, that's a separate note. Chess is not a very progressive game, but... In today's video, I will be sharing with you a game played between two elite players, not 300s, not 600s, where the kings touched. It was a monumental moment in chess history. It created one of the funniest bloopers in chess history. That's all I have to say. Uh, let's jump over here. It's 2019, and we are in India. Actually, it's 2023, and I'm currently sitting in New York. Where are you watching from, by the way? Let me know in, the, let me know in those comments. Uh, this is the uh, Rapid and Blitz Championship being played uh, in India, and it's Vidit Gujarati and Hikarana Kamurna. You might be asking yourself, Levy, how did two kings touch in a 2700 game? Well, that's the purpose of the video. Now, obviously, it's not going to happen early. We got to get through some degree of a game, but no worries. You're going to learn a few things. It's going to be a fun back and forth clash. And at the end, you will see how a couple of super grandmasters touch their kings in the center of the board. And no, that is not a euphemism. Vidit began the game with D4. Uh, Vidit is the second highest rated player in India. Number one, tough, tough fact to follow, of course, being Vishwanathan Anand, who is five-time world champion. Hikaru plays e6, Vidit plays knight f3, d5, and now we have a transposition to the queen's gambit declined. The only reason that the queen's gambit declined is not played via this move order more often uh, is because white can play knight c3. So black does it this way, uh, and uh, now we have a slightly different move order. And Vidit doesn't play the Catalan with g3. Vidit chooses to play the classical queen's gambit with the two knights. Now black has no less than like seven decent options here. One is to play the Semislav, one is to play the Semitarash, one is to play the Vienna, one is to play the Rogozin, one is to play the Queen's Gambit Declined, one is to play this version of the Queen's Gambit Declined, one is to play A6, which is actually what Hikaru did in the game. And I guess black can also maybe play H6, uh, which is some recent sideline with Bishop D6 and Knight C6. Uh, Hikaru plays A6. Now the idea of A6 is that you are not committing the development of this bishop yet. You don't know if you want to go to e7 or to b4. And the other idea is that you would like to take on c4 and then defend the pawn with b5. Okay, and if white plays something like e3 in this position, then you're going to wait for this bishop to move and then you're going to take. So now white spent two tempi and now black will go here and here. So normally what white does in order to take advantage of the person playing with black that just spent the uh, tempo playing this move is white will capture on d5. This is kind of considered the meta strategy uh, of the opening and now basically white is arguing that the move a6 is obsolete. Uh, black plays e takes d5, bishop to g5 pins the knight to the queen, uh, bishop e7 from Hikaru, which is a normal move. Uh, actually, I, uh, I, I am creating an opening repertoire uh, based around the a6 queen's gambit declined, and I really like a setup here by black to play c6 first, and then after white plays e3, which is a natural developing move, uh, black plays bishop f5, trying to trade the bishop off on that square. I, I personally, I find uh, these structures to be really, really easy to play for black uh, and uh, relatively straightforward. I'm not saying I'm improving on Hikaru's play by any means. I'm just simply saying that, you know, for 99% of the chess audience currently watching this, I think the a6 queen's gambit declined is a really, really good repertoire for black, and there are some nice ways to play it. So we have e3, Hikaru attacks the bishop, bishop h4, now Hikaru plays c6, right? So we, I just talked about c6. The idea is that black wants to put a bishop out, and then black wants to play knight bd7. This is rock solid. White is probably going to play things like rook b1, b4, a4, b5. This is called minority attack because white has uh, three pawns on this side of the board and uh, black has uh, four pawns on that side of the board. But saying the words minority attack in 2023 is very quickly turned into some meme uh, because uh, such, is, uh, such is the internet. So it's really, uh, it's, 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 it's tough to use that phrase because uh, the, uh, the average teenager's uh, viewer, uh, viewers uh, start turning it into some nonsense. So queen c2 played by white. 
The idea is to take away the natural developing square of the bishop, and also now bishop g4 is just a silly move, because there's no pin, so white just goes here. Uh, so queen c2, and Hikaru just keeps uh, his position solid, and then offers an exchange to Vidit. So he's not playing in the principled way, he's not castling, he's, he's making multiple moves with the same pi with the pieces multiple times, and he gets this, and then he doesn't even castle here, he comes back. Right, but it's blitz. All right, keep in mind that this is a th th this is a, a speed game ultimately, and uh, they started the game with uh, just five minutes on the clock. So you can play like this because you can play a lot of quick moves, and you're not taking a huge amount of risk. And uh, if you still wondered why the kings haven't touched, is because they're they're not going to just. It's it's not like a meeting of two world leaders. Okay, they don't just roll out a red carpet and a hundred people stand there saluting and. No, no, no. Absolutely massive uh, battles have to take place uh, in order for uh, for the kings to clear a path out for one another. Now, um, Vidit here should probably play something like rook e1, rook c1, and slowly prepare e4, but I think he just kind of was like, look, Hikaru's wasting a lot of time, his bishop is stuck behind a bunch of pieces. Uh, I don't think Hikaru has played this the right way, his king is still in the center, so I'm gonna go e4. But now you see all of his advantage go away, right? Uh, it would have been better for white to keep a little bit of tension because it's very common in these positions for black to actually uh, only look like they are in a bit of a weak spot. And the point is that after pawn takes, knight takes, first of all, black had to take here. Why, why did black have to take? Because otherwise white would have gone e5 and that would have been really bad space-wise and then black would have had a really good, uh, really big problems. But um, you take once and you relieve the pressure, but it's not checkers. This might come as a shock to you, but this is not a Gotham checkers channel. Although I, I do like myself some checkers and some droughts. Uh, I, I, uh, I do enjoy it very much for one simple reason. All the pieces move the same. Uh, and when you can capture, you have to capture. And in chess, none of those things exist. So black doesn't have to take just because he can. And even then, like, he, he could have been fine, but he just castles. And it actually doesn't make any difference that Vidit lines up the rook to the queen because the queen just moves out of the way. And, like, okay, you can walk into the black position, but I got news for you. Are you really going to take the bishop? Like, if I go here, are you really going to go here? You're going to trade a knight, which moved one two, three, four times and took a bishop dead in the corner that not only hasn't moved, it not only hasn't moved, it hasn't seen the light of day. It never even had a chance, all right? It perished off the face of the planet before it could make something out of itself, all right? N no, that's not any good. So Vidit goes to c5 instead. Why does he go to c5? Because if Hikaru would have taken on c5, I think this was Vidit's idea. Improving the situation of his isolated pawn, going here and restricting black's pieces. Of course, the position is equal. All right, but... So Hikaru plays knight d5, Vidit plays a3, taking away knight b4, and Hikaru plays a5. All right, a5 is a couple of ideas. First of all, it prevents b4. Second of all, you might go a4. Third of all, you might go b6 and bishop a6. Uh, Vidit takes... Puts this knight on e5, and now we have the following position uh, after 20 moves. It's a tense position for sure. Now, again, to to most of you watching, most of you are probably like, uh, I don't know, 1,500 and below, I would say. Probably 98% of you. Maybe you're a little bit higher than that, and you still watch my videos, and you haven't turned into one of those folks like, Gotham is just chess entertainment. You can't actually learn anything on this channel. You only you gotta watch the Dora Explorers of chess to learn anything. That's generally what happens when you get too much ELO and, you know, you, you let it get to your head, you become an elitist, you can't watch Guess the ELO anymore, you get offended. It's 2023, all right? If you haven't filled your daily offended at something quota, you're, you're really, you're not living life the right way in 2023. Um, so, I know that this position might not look that interesting, all right, to most of the audience, because you're like, no one's hung like three queens yet, all right? That, that, that's typical low ELO chess. So... White has what's called an isolated pawn. It's a pawn that has no neighbors, all right? C and E. Uh, and uh, a good way to play against an isolated pawn is to create a blockade, which is very much what Hikaru has done. And then the more pieces that get traded, the weaker the pawn becomes because the pawn cannot move forward. Also, it loses its supporters. Now, the person who plays around the isolated pawn also has advantages because with no neighbors, it means the lines and the diagonals are open. So it means that you can actually zig and zag around your pawn and create threats, oh my god, create threats like this, 
right? So check here, bishop to e4. Vidit does that, so he weakens this, and now the king is in the corner. Uh, rook d8, and like I said, so you see Vidit is playing around the isolated pawn, which is exactly what you want to do. Now, a couple of dynamics ex exist between these pieces, like... Which of these pieces would you like to trade? I mean, in a perfect world, if black was to land the trade of the light squared bishops, maybe black would be happy. But really, this knight is the problem. I mean, it's it's not the bishop. So Hikaru just stubbornly goes back to g8. Vidit plays g3, both guarding the f4 square and preparing potentially expanding here. And now we have bishop f5. It's a very tense position. All right, rook to d2. Hikaru now offers an exchange of queens because, like I said, when you're playing against an isolated pawn, you kind of want to trade some pieces. Now, does Vidit want a queen trade? Uh, probably not. And, like, look how quickly things can go from bad to worse if you trade a couple of times. Now black is better because black traded, and now this pawn is weak. That A pawn restricts the movement of the queen side. I talked about that earlier. And the more pieces that get traded, the less valuable the knight is. And on top of that, the knight can just be booted. Like, at some point, you can just play f6, Okay. Now, you won't be playing moves like f6 with queens on the board. So we have knight to c4, and Vidit says, all right, I will trade queens. I will, but only if my pawn goes here. And now I have knight d6 and knight b6, all right? And I got open rooks, and now actually taking on d5 is not so bad for me because I'm going to get a pawn there, and I can create a target for my pieces. So everything in chess at the highest level comes down to just one square, one exchange. Hikaru's like, nope, no trade. Now Vidit says, time to remove that blockade. All right, we're removing the blockade of the isolated pawn. Knight takes e3. Rook e3 and f e3 are both good. I actually like this more because the pawn now has a friend. All right, Vidit doesn't want the pawn to have friends, though. Rook takes e3. Only, only thing the pawn can do is sit at home and study for tests. Uh, no friends. So it still looks pretty good, right? I mean, the pressure still looks like it's on black, but somehow black is just rock solid all right and uh he's got the three and three cluster everything is looking good bishop b3 the kings are still far apart i know i know the kings are still far apart i know but it's worth watching listen if i just skip to the moment where the kings touched like what it's like you buy a movie ticket to watch avengers you show up the climax of the movie happens you you leave really you'd be happy first of all movie tickets in america are now like 20 dollars I don't know what movie tickets cost in, in Europe, like going to the cinema, but here in, in the States, you pay $18 to see a, a movie. Then you pay $17 for a hot dog that's been sitting out for two weeks and popcorn that tastes like someone's been spitting in it for a month, all right? Then the butter's rotten. Then you spend $40 in the movie theater, all right? Then you gotta, go to the, you gotta go to the hospital because the popcorn made you sick and then the ambulance costs 20 grand. And then in the hospital, they charge you another $6,000, all right? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. You, you just spent $30,000 going to the movie theater. You're welcome. Welcome to the U.S. Queen c3 back. Rook a5, h4. Seriously, healthcare system is, is single-handedly the biggest scam, if, if, if not student loans. Rook b5, queen b6. We are now entering the phase of every Hikaru game where he slowly and methodically outplays his opponent both on the clock and on the board, from a position that seemingly has nothing there. Hikaru and Magnus are very similar like that. They're very cunning in their ways, like rook b3 and just, just asking questions. He's not interested in, in checkmate. He's just like, I'm just, I got some questions for you, all right? Now, according to the computer, white can sacrifice the rook here and play bishop c4 and bishop e6, but that's ridiculous. Like, there's no obvious answer to why you would do that. So, Vidit goes here, queen b3, and bishop d5. And again, Hikaru is slightly better. Why is Hikaru slightly better? Because throughout this game, Vidit has had an isolated pawn, and he didn't do his pawn any favors. And notice how, look, like, look at Vidit's position, all right? Now, look at Vidit's position about 15 moves ago. He just never really made any progress. He kind of shuffled and shuffled and made a trade of knights, but you see how Kikaru now starts taking over? This is, like, th this is the stage of the game. He's going to take over the game over an opponent that's very, very, very good. All right? Bishop d5, keeping the tension. Everything Kikaru is doing here is making small improvements. Bishop b3. All right? Now we are down to a spot, and here come the kings, baby. Here come the kings. Oh, we getting there. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. There we go. They were both on g1 and g8, but here come the kings, all right? Embracing their roles in this game. Um, 
Remember, I told you a long time ago that if you trade a lot of pieces in an isolated pawn position, what's going to happen is that that pawn is going to become weak and, and maybe this pawn will be a target throughout this game, all right? So, rook d3. Now, you'll notice that Hikaru, is, he might trade bishops. He also might not trade bishops. King f6, rook c3, all right, king back. Bishop c4. All right, and now Hikaru's messed, messed up a little bit because we're in a rook end game and he has to defend, but he can't defend like this, so he has to play rook a8. Let me tell you something right now. Ain't nobody winning this game with a rook on a8, right? Rook and six versus rook and six. This is not going to happen. So Vidit plays rook b4. Hikaru plays rook a7 and brings his king. Here come the kings. There we go. They're getting closer, all right? They're still getting closer. Now, Hikaru's still a little bit better, a little bit better. But here Hikaru gives up his A pawn for a B pawn. Now Vidit doesn't like that. Apparently that was the way to play, but Vidit doesn't like that. So he plays King C2. Hikaru's still asking questions using this pawn as an anchor into the white position. Now Rook C3. So Rook C3 is a, is a fascinating move because in every single Rook endgame, frankly in, in any endgame period, there is this moment where if you trade everything and you go to a King and Pawn endgame, is it winning, is it a draw, or is it losing? And According to the computer, it thinks that black is winning if he trades the, the, the rooks. It just thinks that this endgame is a win for, white, uh, for black. All right? It thinks that white does not have enough pawn mobility. The engine also might not fully understand it at a low enough depth. So, rook b5. Hikaru doesn't do it because it's a massive commitment. He's not sure yet, and he doesn't want to kill off his winning chances. All right? So, Hikaru plays g5. All right? But he loses the a4 pawn. But he's gonna go here... Now we have take, take, f4, take, take, take. All right, we are down to three pawns each. Surely this has to be a draw. But where are the kings going to touch? I am ready for some kings touching each other. Oh, no. Oh, but the king's coming forward. Car plays f5. Vita plays rook c4. Hikaru drives the rook down, hits the pawn on b2. King defends. King moves forward. Rook c5, king e6. The four play is just ridiculous. b4. Rook f3 check. Now, if you play king c4, b5 is borderline mate. White has to sacrifice the rook, so the king goes back. Rook e3. Vidit plays b5. We have takes take. Down to two pawns each. Down to two pawns each. I want to see some oiled up king wrestling. Let's go. f4 by black. King c2. f3. Black is trying to promote, but here comes the king. Oh, but now f2. Wait a minute. This is really tricky. You can't take the rook because I'm going to promote. Rook b1, and Hikaru finds just as you need Hikaru on the 66th move of the game with 10 seconds on the clock. Finds the only winning idea in the position, which is the move rook to B3. And the idea is that this is a deflection, and if the rook moves something to H1, I'm going to win your pawn, go here, and bring my king and win the game. So Vidit in this position needs to play rook to F1. But now, folks, is the moment you have all been waiting for. I will now show you the clip. Shout out to Chess Base India, by the way. Live... The footage from the venue as the kings touched in this game. And not only that, I will narrate it for you. You see the position on the board. Hikaru just played rook b3. Vidit just played rook b1. Rook f1, sorry. Here we go. Hikaru shaking his head. Slides his king. Vidit takes the pawn. But now there's a rook trade. King e3, Vidit, three seconds. Trade, trade. We've entered a king and pawn endgame. And here is the move heard around the world as Vidit Gujarati plays... King e3! What a moment. Vidit, instant replay. VAR confirms it. King to e3 on the board. Can we just commend Vidit Gujarati for breaking the boundaries of the game? This is some, this is some seriously important stuff, I think, not just for society, uh, but also just uh, in general. I mean, big picture... Not just for uh, for the human race, for all potential intergalactic uh, species that are out there and races that are out there that do. I think we can coexist in harmony. You know, I think that we should break down uh, the uh, artificial barriers that we have created. Not just uh, not just for chess kings, but uh, all humans in general. So Vidit in this position plays king to e3, realizes immediately that he can't do it, and he carves like what. <laughs> And so, so it's an illegal move. Hikaru's time is ticking, by the way. He almost loses on time. I don't know if you see. Look at that. Look at that. He's got two seconds, and then he paused the clock. Uh, and um, 
Essentially, what happens when you make an illegal move is they take the clock and they actually bash you over the head with it. That wasn't caught on camera. Um, no, they just give the, the, the party that was wronged an extra minute of time, generally, in a Blitz game. Uh, now, I, for, uh, for, okay, I'm a believer in the fact that Black should just take White's king here. Like, I think taking the king should just be legal. Uh, this is a hilarious moment. Now, clearly, this is a blooper. Vid had no time on the clock. Uh, it happens. Well, no, it actually, like, it actually very much does not happen. Th th this is, so, um, in this position, uh, Hikaru played king d5, and, and, and white is losing, uh, and Vidit, with no time on the clock, just goes to a king and pawn endgame. He doesn't have to. He could have tried to win this pawn with his king, like king e2, king d4, king f2, uh, but this is probably still losing. Uh, he would have maybe had to give a check, and then try to, you know, draw this position, but this is very, very tricky. Uh, but instead of that, he did this, and this is losing, but here Vidit tried to do that. That's what he tried to do. <laughs> now, the funny thing is that I, 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 I actually think this is probably still losing after King C3, but I'm not sure. Uh, now, we will, of course, finish the game. Uh, what Vidit really wanted to play was something like this. Uh, he plays king f3, which is sort of the same thing, but this is actually losing because black plays b5, and the king is shouldering white's king away. So, the king tries to come here, but the black king is shouldering the king, and this is a losing king and pawn endgame. It's a losing king and pawn endgame because there's a red carpet for the pawn. So, side defense always wins. The, 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 the aggressive king has to be standing in front of the pawn, and on the side of it, ideally. And it doesn't matter. Had Vidit gone king e2, it would have been the same thing. King c3. Uh, let's say, you know, a4. Uh, black would go king b4, king c4. And uh, again, the king is on the side, and the pawn has a red carpet for it. Uh, e you know, e even b5 is winning, because you have to know opposition. And uh, this is completely winning. But uh, yeah, pretty hilarious moment in this game. And it was a good back and forth game. Nice, instructive game as well. Um, king's touched. For the first time ever, I think, in in, uh, in elite competition. I've never seen something like this, uh, but I hope I, I see more of it in the future. You know what I mean? Because this, th th this really humanizes the top players, I feel like. I feel like this is, uh, this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. And um, yeah, once again, um, if you'd like a really funny clip, I can't show it to you uh, in this video because it's got a copyrighted uh, song in it. It's called King Sacrifice. It's got 36 million views. It's a clip. And um, I can't show it to you because uh, I don't want to get my video demonetized, but um, it's got a very funny animated sequence uh, for when this moment happens. It's a very, very funny moment. Uh, and I, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to share this fun game with you because we don't get a lot of moments like this. And when you play online, you can't even make these moves, all right? Now, personally, I believe that kings should be able to be captured. You leave the king hanging, they should be able to take it, all right? Uh, that's all for today. Shout out to Chess Base India once again for this clip. And... Um, I'll see you in the next one. There will be no kings touching, but there will be something epic. Get out of here.